Hello, hello, and welcome back to another video on this channel. Today, we're going to be talking all things Dostoevsky, and more specifically, we're going to be talking about the order in which you should read Dostoevsky. Now, this is a very interesting thing, and people always have their own opinions, but here would be my guide to what order you should read Dostoevsky, and it will be tailor-made for you. And what I mean by that is I'll have a few different progressions or a few different orders, depending on whether you're a theist and agnostic, you're doubting your faith, and these different ideas. This guide is for you if you have any queries about what, well, what's the best way for me to approach it? What's the best way for me to approach and understand Dostoevsky? I'll discuss that in this video and also help and guide you to make this very difficult, but also very important decision. So if you're interested in that, make sure you watch till the end of the video. If you enjoy this video and this content, make sure you like and subscribe for more videos on Dostoevsky and Nietzsche. Tomorrow I'll be doing a debate review, like always on Sundays. On Mondays, I might be doing a response video. So I talk a lot about Dostoevsky, Nietzsche, Christianity, and theism and philosophy as a whole. So if you're interested in that, make sure you like and subscribe. It helps the channel grow and means a lot to me. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So first of all, I'll like to give a general overview of Dostoevsky's works and why you might want to read Dostoevsky. And I have made a more in-depth video about Dostoevsky of why or whether you should even read Dostoevsky, and that will be in the card up above. But essentially what I want to say very quickly is that Dostoevsky is a very interesting and a very profound thinker, and also a very dark one. So if you are not in the right state of mind, I'd like to make it very clear that if you're struggling with depressing or suicidal thoughts or anything like that, you should, of course, go get some help, talk to someone about it, but also Dostoevsky might not be for you. It's very difficult to read Dostoevsky if you're struggling with depressing issues and suicide and things like that, because at the end of the day, Dostoevsky is a very dark character. And of course, like Berdyaev says in his, in his book Dostoevsky and in Interpretation, Dostoevsky doesn't let the darkness have the last word, but he does take you through darkness. And if you're not in the best sense of mental health or things like that, it might not be the best place to start to read Dostoevsky because the darkness is indeed very, very dark. So with that, just a quick disclaimer out of the way, let's get into the order. So I think across the board, whether you're an atheist, agnostic, theist, or whatever you are, I think the best place where you should start would always be reading Nikolai Berdyaev's book, Dostoevsky and Interpretation. All of these books will be linked in the description below so you can go check them out. I'll I'll be looking for the cheapest places to buy them. Normally it's book depository. So I'll put that in the description below so you can look for where you could purchase these books. But essentially, I think the best place to start off is Nikolai Berdyaev's interpretation of Dostoevsky. Not because I necessarily agree with everything he says, but he gives a very good overview of Dostoevsky, gives a bit of understanding into where Dostoevsky comes from, what Dostoevsky is teaching us, and he basically tells us a lot about the nature of Dostoevsky and his thoughts. He talks about Dostoevsky on freedom, Dostoevsky about the spirit, Dostoevsky about Christianity, and of course there's always a different interpretation that everyone takes when you read Dostoevsky or Nietzsche or any of these rather profound philosophers who aren't really around anymore, especially if it's literature. But I think it gives a brief overview, and I think if, if you're doubting whether you should or should not read Dostoevsky, that's the best place to start. So with that out of the way, let's go into the actual books by Dostoevsky. And I, and I do have my Dostoevsky collection here. I have Demons, The Brothers, Karamazov, and a few of these Dostoevsky books. I actually... My idiot copy is with actually my mother right now, so I don't have that with me, but that doesn't really matter too much. I'll, I will just go through it. So first of all, I like to say that this, this thing is, reading Dostoevsky is a very personal experience. It's, it's something that you have to learn and appreciate for yourself. And what I mean by that is, if you really don't buy into it, you're not gonna get much out of it. And, and it's very easy to read Dostoevsky just like skimming through the pages, but if you read it like that, it's very easy to, to miss anything or, or to miss, of key aspect of Dostoevsky and that's why I think that's why I like to read really slowly and really go in depth into each of the characters each of the pages and really try to find what you want from the, from Dostoevsky or find find what Dostoevsky is trying to say because it, it's very profound and very deep every single page of Dostoevsky so 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 as another tip I guess here just don't don't try to rush through you read Dostoevsky as you would perhaps read another book don't rush through it 
really take your time. It doesn't matter if you take a long time reading it, if you take a lot out of it, and you can take a lot out of Dostoevsky. And that's why I love Dostoevsky so much. It really has changed my life significantly and changed my worldview and changed everything. Almost everything in my philosophy and everything is based upon me reading Dostoevsky. So without me f talking further about this, well, let us start off with where I think you should start, or actually a book that I would start off by saying you probably shouldn't, you don't need to read. And and this is basically Dostoevsky's book, Poor Folk. And essentially, while this is indeed the book which he, he it was his rise to fame, he, he wrote this book and then got uh, noted, or he was he brought, was brought to attention by Belinsky and other of these philosophers and the people at the time. I don't think this book really presents his philosophy too much. It, and it's just seen in like my notes about it. The notes about Poor Folk is significantly less than any of the other books that I've read. Like you could read this if you just want to read a bit of Dostoevsky, but not really figure out what his main ideas are. But at the end of the day, it's it's before he went into penal service. It's, it's before a lot of the things which happened in his life. And hence, is like one of his earlier works. It's like the early Wittgenstein and the late Wittgenstein. This is the early Dostoevsky and not the late Dostoevsky. So, I mean, it's good to just understand a bit about context, but it's really not too necessary. So poor folk is not going to be in any of the orders that I suggest you to read. So first of all, I'd like to make this for the Christian. The, and when I mean the Christian, I want to say someone who's very strong in their faith, because at times those who are doubting their faith as a Christian could almost be put into the agnostic camp, if you want me, if you get what I mean. So what's the best order to read Dostoevsky as a Christian? Well, you know, I, I was thinking about this last night and I sent it to my friend because my friend was asking what order should I, should she read Dostoevsky? And and, and, I, and I sent her something, but I, I, I have to admit that it probably wasn't the best list, not because I was in t purposely trying to send her a wrong list, but I perhaps had a different approach to it the other day. I would say that you should start off with The Idiot if you're a Christian, because, because The Idiot really summarizes perfectly, I think, the entirety of Christian message. It gives the entire picture of Christianity and 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 influences you a lot because in my life I I started off with the idiot and I and I complete I, and I don't regret it at all because reading the idiot is just so beautiful because it pictures a struggle between good and bad via Nastasia choosing between Mushkin and Rogozhin and it also pictures the love of God through the actions of Mushkin it it really teaches you a lot about what God is like how how God really loves you and God how God loves us regardless of how much times we sin against him and how much times we run away from him. And that's why I think you should always start off with the idiot because because Prince Mushkin is just so beautiful and it's such a perfect representation of Christ. And are there parts where I disagree with Dostoevsky? Yes, but I think that the overall picture re, re, uh, like presented by Dostoevsky in The Idiot is indeed the best place to start off with as a Christian. And the second book that I'll recommend you to read after The Idiot is perhaps what I will call The House of the Dead, because The House of the Dead is indeed one of the less, lesser known books when you compare it to of the other, all the other books that he writes. But I think The House of the Dead is very important in the sense that The House of the Dead not only focuses on his suffering that he faced in Siberia, but also focuses on hope as well. And you could, and it's in The House of the Dead where you could really see Dostoevsky forming. He's talking about his, his exile in Russia when in Siberia when he was when he was put into a camp and and basically what happens here is that he's surrounded by the chains the suffering of of being in a prison but at the same time he looks at that hope and he says well there's something else there in life and I think that's basically Christian life and that's a good place to start your worldview because you realize that suffering in this world is significantly more not greater but I mean more than the joy in this world. But what Dostoevsky says here in The House of the Dead is saying, well, even though maybe numerically there is less suff there is less good than suffering, but that good itself, even though it's so small, is sufficient to defeat all the pain, defeat all the suffering. And that's essentially what I think Tolkien says when he says there is some good and that good is worth fighting for. It, despite that fact that there's so little good in this world and so much evil, that good, the existence of a tiny bit of good, is sufficient to dispel the darkness and, and defeat all the evil. So that's why I think for a Christian, reading The House of the Dead is very impactful and very profound and very helpful. And of course, the second book I read was The Brothers Karamazov. Was that, no, it, it wasn't The Brothers, it was actually Notes from the Underground. But, but I think that reading The House of the Dead would have been better for me. And then you read The Brothers Karamazov, I think, after you read The House of the Dead. Because The Brothers Karamazov is, 
it brings you away from that hope and brings you into the darkness of mankind, but doesn't bring you to the darkest of all Dostoevsky's novels in the sense that the brothers Karamazov is indeed, you have the pain, you have the suffering, you have I, Ivan discussing the pain and the torments of children and, and all these problems about the Catholic Church, the institution of the church. And, and at the same time, you have Alyosha on the other hand. So, so you have another Mushkin-like figure within the Brothers Karamazov and there is so much depth in the Brothers Karamazov and it really presents, and this is basically Dostoevsky's magnum opus. You have Dostoevsky in his prime right before he dies. He, he presents the problems, the great suffering that he experienced in his life and contrasted it to the beauty of Christ. And that's what you see in the Brothers Karamazov. And I think that is a very beautiful picture. And, and of course, it shakes you to the core, but at the same time, it gives you hope and gives you beauty. And, and from understanding the hope and the beauty of the small, of the small good in this world from the, from the house of the dead, you get to learn more about it and appreciate it and appreciates its, its strength when you're reading the Brothers Karamazov. So I think there's a very helpful and very good balance there. And of course, I'll be discussing each of these books in depth when we when we go on in this channel and when this series goes longer. But I think that that's why I, I would say that the Brothers Karamazov should be next after you read The House of the Dead if you're a Christian. And after The House of the Dead, I would like to read Notes from Underground because Notes from Underground is sometimes called the first existentialist novel in history instead of, although Kierkegaard is normally seen as the father of existentialism, Dostoevsky really struggles and discusses the ideas of of the death of God. You have in Notes of Underground, you have a guy who some people like calling the underground man who's really struggling with morality. He's saying that God doesn't exist, then well, there's only laws of nature and science. And, and science in the strictest sense, in the sense that, well, science, well, we only have science. It's like, if the laws of nature are the only things which govern us, then there's a lot of absurdities. If God doesn't exist, then man becomes a gorilla or man becomes an ape in the sense that we're nothing but just mere animals. And and if that happens, then, well, what's the result of society in that way? And I think Notes from the Underground is very profound in that sense. It, it really questions you and really drives into the core of, well, if God doesn't exist, what if? And, and that is perfectly built upon in the book Demons. And that's the next book that I'll go to if you are indeed a Christian. And because in Demons, you see the the true absurdity of, of atheism. You have the idea of absurdity of life without God in, in Notes from Underground. And you have that developed in Demons via a character named Kirillov, who, who basically, although is not the main character of the book, Stavrohin is the main character of the book. But, but Kirillov is a character who, who, if you've read a bit of Camus, is is a guy in the absurd hero. He kills himself because God doesn't exist and he, and he does so out of an exercise of self-will. And I plan to be doing a video about that soon or I'll be giving a soliloquy a la in the, in the form of Kirillov or I'll, I'll do a bit of acting for that. But I mean, if you're interested in that, make sure you stay tuned for it because I've written the soliloquy. I just have to present and record it. But essentially, Demons really struggles with what happens with atheism. I mean, it really develops the ideas that is found in the brothers Karamazov and the idiot also in the sense that it says, well, why is atheism the res or why is socialism the result of atheism? And it really develops in this book. It says, well, if you take away God from man, man then becomes God. And this is an idea which you see a bit in Nietzsche as well. And Nietzsche really delves into it. And he, of course, Nietzsche, it's very easy to say Nietzsche was influenced by Dostoevsky. Not so. I mean, Nietzsche was really impressed by Dostoevsky. But by the time he read Dostoevsky, that was already really late in his life. So Nietzsche developed his ideas on his own, although he learned more about his ideas and developed it more from, from Dostoevsky. But but what I'm trying to say is that the idea of man becoming God is really embodied in demons by the character of Kirillov. So that's essentially, I think, the next book you should read is Demons. And then after that, I think you should end off with Crime and Punishment. And this is normally known as the most famous book of Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment. But And you might be finding it quite surprised that I'm asking you to read it at the end. And you might realize that almost in every of these categories, Crime and Punishment is one of the last books or towards the second half of the books that you should read. And the reason for that is because it is less so about philosophy and more about psychology. And, and there's nothing wrong with it being about psychology, but it just it just builds up upon everything else. It's not one of his main works where he really discusses Christianity or theism. But he's just saying, well, what is the strength of conscience? What What is the significant power of conscience and what truly punishes someone? And that's the theme that he develops in The House of the Dead. So in, in some ways, The House of the Dead and 
crime and punishment go kind of hand in hand. But the reason why I separate them two is because it also talks about morality, which is for, and the idea of if God doesn't exist, then all things are permissible. And that's why I want to have behind demons and behind the brothers Karamazov, because in demons, you have someone killing himself because God doesn't exist and makes himself God. In, in demons, you have, I mean, in crime and punishment, that is even developed further in the sense that someone kills someone else because God doesn't exist. And, and you would soon see that the discussions of Kirillov and Raskolnikov are actually very similar, although they're very different, because Kirillov says that killing someone else would be the highest sense of, would be the lowest sense of self-will, whereas killing myself would be the highest sense of self-will. On the other hand, Raskolnikov thinks that he should kill someone else and not himself. So, so you have a bit of a distinction between Kirillov and, and, and Raskolnikov. And I think it's by reading Demons first and then you read Crime and Punishment that you have quite a good balance and a good understanding there. So that's the list for Christians. To sum it up, you start off with The Idiot and then you go to Notes from Underground. And after that, you go to The Brothers Karamazov. And then after that, you go to notes from underground no i mean i think the notes of the underground was house of the dead so and then after the, after notes from the underground you go to demons and from demons you go to crime and punishment so so that's why i think about christian if you're a christian and i mean when i mean you're a christian i mean you're quite a strong christian in your faith but then if you're agnostic or a guy who's doubting christianity i would have a bit of a different approach to it i, I would say that it's quite similar in the sense that i think you should start off with the idiot and since I've talked a bit about what each of the books represent, I'll just tell you the book, the order, and why I, you should put it in that order instead of talking about, a bit more about what's in each book. But I'll essentially say that you should start off with The Idiot. And for the same reason, it emphasizes the love of God. It summarizes the picture. And after that, I think if you're an agnostic, then you should read, perhaps, you should then read, I, I would say that you should then read Notes from the Underground, and, and really figure out, well, what are the true implications of atheism? Or what are some of the implications of atheism? And then you'll read notes from the underground for the reasons I've discussed before. And then after that, you would then read demons. Because demons, as, you, as I've said, demons and notes. I dropped the book. Demons and notes from the underground go hand in hand. So you will understand implications of atheism in notes from the underground a bit. And you have a more broad, multiple ideas of atheism. And then you go into demons, which is really specified into self-will. What if God doesn't exist? What if there is no more will governing us? Do we become God by exercising our self-will? And after reading that, I think you then read Crime and Punishment. And the reason why I say read Crime and Punishment is because it further develops idea of demons. And as you can see, I like putting notes from the underground. I like putting notes from the underground, demons, and then crime and punishment together as a row. But after that, I would say that you should then turn back. And as you can see, there's a bit of a, a kind of you could look at like a table or a mountain. It For the Christian, you kind of get built up to the peak. Whereas in for the, for the agnostic, you have it starting up with the idiot. Then you hit the peak and then slowly go back down again. And, and... And that's why I say after Crime and Punishment, you should read The Brothers Karamazov, because I think that The Brothers Karamazov is indeed a, a book which then ties in all the themes. And you say, well, if God doesn't exist, all things are permissible or there is no virtue. There is nothing wrong with everything that we do. So you have that in mind. And then you kind of tie that back into what you learned in the first book. You have kind of a circle with Alyosha and Mushkin. And in response to the problem of evil and all the things which and the idea of self-will which is also raised in the brothers karamazov and then finally you read the house of the dead and and i think you could read do this interchangeably you could either end off with the brothers karamazov or end off with the house of the dead i'll recommend you to end off with the house of the dead because it once again emphasizes what is seen in the brothers karamazov there is great suffering in this world but there's love and hope as well instead of leaving you off with a definite answer perhaps this this the re ending of the house of the dead i think will leave you with a question and and the reason why i'm saying that is i'm not here to tell you if you're an agnostic you should stop questioning yourself or if you're you're doubting your faith you should stop questioning because i don't think that's how your psychological nature works or your how you should go around doing things i don't think it's the most honest way to do things by just saying well let's just stop questioning what i do think is that by reading the house of the dead you will be left with a question but I think that by understanding or reading through the implications of atheism from, from 
reading demons crime and punishment you you would realize or you would at the end see that well you have two hypotheses where there's evil and suffering a lot of it but there's also beauty and the good and the hope and i think that balance will lead you off with a very good question it's not a definite answer because i think it's very easy for some people or some some theologians or christians to just say well it's 80 percent good and then 20 percent bad but in reality it's almost the opposite it's 80 percent bad and 20 percent good but the only question is is how good is that good is that good sufficient to make everything else worth it? and that's why i think dostoevsky says no in some sense i'm just checking how much time i have left on the camera but essentially what dostoevsky says is well despite all the evil in this world and even if every even if the entire world was evil as long as Christ exists, the story of Christ itself would be a sufficient justification for the entirety of evil in this world. And that's another idea which is brought up by Dostoevsky, which I wouldn't talk too much. But that in this video, but that's essentially the kind of the range of the range of things for ag ag agnostic. You should start off with the idiot and then you build up to notes from the underground, notes from underground, actually demons and then crime and punishment and things like that. And then you tie it back down. You slowly go down. I'm not saying that down in the way of it's getting worse but in the sense that you it's tying into all these beliefs it's really it's it's you see you start off with the love of god and you end off with love of love of god and a question and hope so so i think that arc for an agnostic would be very beneficial and finally for the atheist and and of course there's a few types of atheists you know there's the more agnostic atheist and the atheist atheist and there's the new atheist as well which i think is quite a dodgy matter to be in because i don't think they actually even think too much about the problems raised in dostoevsky and and this is mainly for the one because i think that most atheists are the agnostics and i think most of you should follow the agnostic path but i think if you're truly an, if you're an atheist or you would say god doesn't exist i don't believe in god and god cannot exist then i'll and and this is definitely more focused to the new atheist path and more extreme atheism and and this is not, as I've said before, I know I'm going on and repeating myself a bit here, but I want to make it very clear that this path should only should be more beneficial for the new atheist instead of the kind of so-so atheist, if you get what I mean. I mean, I, I, I can't th get, think of the best word to put it right now, but this is for the new atheist, like the Richard Dawkins and kind of, or the people like that. And, and the way I'll go around it, as you can see, is instead of starting with the idiot, like the p pure ones who either build it up to the top or go up and down again i just start from the top and go down again because i think it's really going to shock someone and 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 it'll, and it'll open a new approach to them because because i think it'll shake them to the core reading dostoevsky and i mean reading nietzsche also will shake you to the core but i think reading dostoevsky for for an, a an atheist might shake you even more than nietzsche in some sense and and I, of course i recommend you to read nietzsche as well because dostoevsky and nietzsche go hand in hand but that's for another video i'll be talking about that later so if you're interested in that make sure you stay tuned by liking and subscribing but essentially i would say if you're an atheist you should start off with notes from the underground and the reason because of this is it doesn't jump really deep into dostoevsky yet in the sense that it doesn't get into the heart of the problem it it it, it introduces you to the large spectrum of the problem but doesn't get to the absolute heart of the or the core of the issue so you start off with notes from underground it would give you the questions it would it would raise the problems and implications of atheism from the first part and after that you would read demons and i'm and i'm definitely do not read me as saying that if you're an atheist you should kill yourself that's not what demons is saying what demons is saying i think is a more subtle thing is that if if god doesn't exist there's nothing wrong with killing yourself but that that's a completely different issue and a completely different idea entirely but i'll discuss or talk about that in more depth later there's no really impossible to go and discuss that in depth in this video but essentially the tagline at the back is whoever conquers pain and fear he himself will be god so essentially it's talking about the man god in demons so that is a very good place to start off with i mean as a second book to note from underground that really talks about the implications of atheism and it, and it'll really make you up question yourself really deeply i think and after that you'll read crime and punishment as you can see as i've always said notes from underground demons and crime and punishment kind of go together crime and punishment will really ask questions question you even further if god doesn't exist is all things really permissible and if god doesn't exist why is the conscience so bad or why do we feel such great guilt and that's seen in crime and punishment and then after that i'll say Perhaps I'll say read The House of the Dead because The House of the Dead. Well, actually, no, I would say it's either between The Brothers Karamazov and The House of the Dead. And it's at these times where you realize I, I don't script my videos at all. But because it's very difficult to choose between The House of the Dead and 
the Brothers Kramers. And I think that I could leave this choice up to you. I mean, if you want to slowly go downwards is as a more relaxing way, I would, I would choose a I'll choose the house of I'll actually choose the brothers Kramazov and then the house of the dead. But if you want to have a more plateau and then go go lower and go up again a bit, then you'll read House of the Dead first and then finally you'll read the brothers Kramazov. Because I think the brothers Kramazov ends on a very light note and a very heart a, a whole a very wholesome note in the sense that despite all the suffering in this book, God and the love of God is still sufficient or greater than all that suffering. And I think that's what you see in the brothers Kramazov. I think that would perfectly tie in at the end of the day to tie you back to the idiot. And you'll see the beauty of Christ and you see great suffering in the idiot as well. I mean, a lot of people, or you might be thinking when you're, you're listening to my book that, oh, there's no suffering in the idiot. That's completely wrong. Su- there is great suffering in the idiot. But I think it's a beautiful place to end because the idiot is perhaps one of the books in Dostoevsky, which is truly beautiful. It's simple, but beautiful at the same time. Not in the sense it's simple to read, but more in the sense that the story itself is very simple and very profound and insightful. You know, it's like it's like looking at a sunset when in, in comparison to some to some really complex art. The sunset's simple, but it's also so beautiful. And that's why I think the idiot is in some ways. And and that's why I think you should end off with the idiot. And by reading it in this order, the new atheist or the atheist would would really think, OK, we have two hypotheses in front of us. Well, which one do you want to choose? Which one? How should you live your life? And as you can note from the entire discussion, none of this got to do with whether God actually exists in the physical sense or the metaphysical sense. Like none of Dostoevsky or Nietzsche's arguments talk about whether God actually exists. And that's kind of true. No one actually lives their life based on the assumption of does God actually exist in a physical sense? And of course, some people do, but the majority of people just base their life on other things, right? And that's what Nietzsche and Dostoevsky discuss really in depth. And the psychology of God, not just the metaphysics of God. And that's a very interesting and profound thing as well, what draw me to what drew me to Nietzsche and Dostoevsky. But essentially I think here we have three different ways to go around doing it. For the Christian, you go up, you build up from the from the idiot to crime and punishment. For the agnostic, you start from the idiot, go up, and then go back down again to the house of the dead to end off with a question. And then finally for the atheist you start off hard with notes from underground and you start off with demons and and crime and punishment, and then you go down to the beauty of Christ, and and you see how these different things interact with each other, and I think it'll give you a good picture of Dostoevsky and an approach to Christianity, and would really change your life, just as Dostoevsky has changed my life. I hope you have a great day. Like always, if you're interested in more of this video, or more of this content about Dostoevsky, discussions about the- theism, philosophy of religion, theology, anything like that, make sure to like and subscribe. It means a lot to me. We're almost up to 200 subscribers. So five more subscribers, we hit 200. I'll be great. Uh, it'll be absolutely phenomenal for me. Chelsea's playing Liverpool, uh, Leeds at Ellen Road tonight. So come on, you blues. Looking forward to that. Really hope we win. And also, finally, tomorrow I'll be doing a debate review. And also I have a Discord server where you can request videos from me. So if you have any ideas that you want me to do, any feedback about this channel, let me know on my Discord server. The link is going to be in the description below. So pop in right there and we I will see you in that video. So hope you have a great day. Like always, stay safe, have fun and have spend some time with your friends and family. Of course, as long as COVID permits it. God bless. Like always, stay safe. Goodbye. And I'll see you in the next one. Come on, you blue.